Hi everyone, uh, it's been a while since I uh, shot a video, so uh, I'm still alive and kicking, and uh, fortunately I'm, I'm uh, really starting to get my, uh, my Park Jet Mojo back. So, uh, in this video, I, I, I should say I hope that uh, you and yours are, are doing well in this uh, time of uh, pandemic craziness we have going on around the globe. Uh, I hope you're staying safe and, uh, and well. Uh, so this series, essentially, I'm going to do, um, uh, I guess, an advanced modified, or a modified build on a uh, NAMC uh, MiG-35B, uh, which is uh, essentially one of these bad boys. This is, uh, this is actually a full-size uh, uh, built to plans. Uh, the only modification I think I did to this one was that I moved the motor uh, forward by about an inch. Uh, this is uh, the only plane I have left in my hangar that's made pretty much completely of, uh, of uh, Depron. Uh, just been flying the living daylights out of this. I think it's one of the two planes in my hangar. I have over 500 flights. But uh, anyway, so in this series um, we're going to build a modified version of that uh, plane. Uh, modified, uh, downsized and some other modifications which uh, I'll show you here on the uh, plans that I've cut out uh, already. Uh, I'm going to build it primarily uh, the wings and the, uh, the fuselage will be built, built with uh, Dollar Tree foam or Adam's ready board there. Hopefully you can see the, the logo up in the corner there. Uh, I'm also going to build the, um, the, uh, the vertical uh, stabilizers and this bottom piece than a cell here, that's all one piece. I'm going to make those out of Depron, uh, the yellow ones uh, out of Depron, and uh, I think that's um, about it. Then that's primarily just for um, uh, strength and weight, a little bit of weight savings in the back end. But what I am going to do in this video series is I will, for those parts uh, that um, I'm going to build out of Depron, I'll also discuss what I would do uh, and, and hopefully demonstrate what I would do if I was building those parts out of Adam's Ready Board and or uh, model plane foam, which for uh, most of us here in North America are our main uh, scratch building foams for park jets. Uh, so anyway, I've already dug out a couple of scraps uh, that will accommodate my, my two elevons, uh, you know, dug around through my, my scrap bin here since I'm, you know, kind of hoarding... Uh, um, uh, Depron uh, and use up as, uh, li a little bit of it in just about every one of my builds. So if you've watched uh, uh, any of my videos, uh, you know, I, I tend to build my planes to, uh, to fly uh, uh, pretty fast, so they do need to stand up. You know, I want them uh, as lightweight and sleek as possible, but also uh, strong in the areas that they need to be. So hopefully uh, in through this video series, I'll demonstrate uh, the techniques that I've learned and have, have used now uh, for a, a few years, you know, uh, building, I've been building park jets now for about uh, seven years. So in this uh, build series, uh, the first, one of the first things, this is the wing plate, I'm sorry it's a bit uh, crinkled, but I've had it in a, uh, in a, in a bag. Uh, I cut these out quite a long time ago. Uh, so I've downsized it, the wingspan on this, the wingspan on the full size one is 27 inches. So I've downsized this one. The wingspan is going to be 25 and a half inches. Uh, now I've actually built one as small as a 24 inch wingspan, and that was, you know, certainly very fast and uh, and agile. But I found that it lacked. Uh, I started to lose the sort of the stability in the wind that I wanted, and in many of the other uh, park jets in my hangar now, um, uh, I found that sort of 25 and a half inch wingspan. Is, uh, is sort of ideal for the way that I like to fly and in the environment that I normally fly. So that's uh, <clears throat> one of the main reasons why I went uh, there. Uh, now I've got a lot of highlighted stuff on here. I'll try not to get too into too much detail. Uh, but I'm gonna, I've moved the motor mount. Uh, the motor is going to be moved forward by, uh, I think, about uh, 30 millimeters, something like that. So just over uh, an inch. Um, one of the reasons that I like to do that, especially when I build with, uh, with uh, Dollar Tree foam, is I leave the paper on behind. Now this, line, this pink line here indicates where the back of the KF airfoil is. So from here back on the wing, 
the, um, the paper will stay on the uh, Dollar Tree foam as well as on the, uh, the back plate here where the elevons will attach. The paper will stay on there. So what that does is it adds quite a bit of weight in the back half of the airplane. And so what I found through experience building with Dollar Tree foam is, you know, if I can get that motor forward, it, uh, it you know, it tends to, to get the weight uh, closer to the center of gravity, but also moves weight forward to help counterbalance that uh, uh, extra weight in the uh, back end because of the paper left on the Dollar Tree foam. Now it's you know it's kind of a trade-off because if you if you take the paper off, uh, the the foam is quite flexible, and then you have to add on other um, uh, reinforcements. So that's primarily why uh, I've moved uh, the motor. Uh, forward. So I've already drawn out, uh, you know, so my rudder servos, for example, will have to go forward. Uh, these dark black lines here uh, are where the um, the wing reinforcement will be. So I've, re I've already drawn, this is where my main spar will go th through the center of the wing and then eventually I'll have two sort of legs. The, the wing reinforcement in the MiG-35B is sort of like uh, uh, the mathematical symbol pi that somebody sort of sat on and squashed. Um, so anyway, I'm not sure. I'll have to measure out the lengths. Uh, I'll be using definitely be using a four millimeter carbon rod here for this spar. Uh, I may use uh, once I figure out how long these ones are going to be. I may also use a uh, four millimeter carbon rod there too. Uh, but I think I uh, will be able to get away with uh, three millimeter carbon tube, which is is lighter. It's about half the weight of the the rod. And that's normally what we call for with the plans. Uh, I actually think I'll get along there okay. Uh, so I've already made, uh, like I said, uh, some modifications. Now one thing I should point out, uh, I will point out, let me just highlight it here uh, so it's easier for you to see. Is one thing when you're building uh, planes out of Dollar Tree foam. Once you take the, uh, you know, most most park jet plans, including these ones, these were designed to be built with, um, you know, a six millimeter foam, whether it be Depron uh, model plane foam. And what happens is, um, if what I do is I add about a millimeter, uh, probably two millimeters, on the inside of this line, you know, on the on these uh, these parts of the uh, leading edge root extension, because if I don't do that because I'm building my fuselage out of Dollar Tree foam and I'm going to be removing the paper from that is when I go to slide this uh, the fuselage in here I'm going to have far too uh, big a gap and it's not going to be a snug fit and it's uh, it's hard to align that. Uh, I have built a full size um, uh, MiG 35B entirely out of Dollar Tree foam. Uh, I would encourage you to check the links uh, in the video description down below, I'll have links to um, my beginner build series, which talks it shows a lot of the basic uh, things that I use, like uh, how to put reinforcement in foam, how to how I do hinges, and uh, runs through the entire build of a uh, profile MiG-29 uh, park jet. Uh, also, I'll have. Uh, um, I did sort of start an intermediate park jet build series. I'll have that. Uh, there as well. Uh, so anyway, so that's that's sort of where we're at for starters um, for power setup, uh, and I'll and I'll cover these things in more detail. Uh, I'll, I'll be using initially. I'll probably be using my um, my favorite setup. This is a uh, a Gep RC 2306 2750 kV uh, quad motor um, with a uh, where did I put my prop? Let's see through. It was hard to see. Uh, this is a Gemfan Hurricane 51499 uh, three-bladed prop, obviously. Um, my, my favorite uh, prop and what this allows me to do is, I, from uh, both bench testing and quite a bit of uh, field testing, uh, running this prop, I can, I can, it flies uh, really, really well on both 3S and 4S. So, if, you know, I really want to light my hair on fire and drop a 4S in there. I don't have to mess around changing props. Um, I'll be using a Platinum Pro, Hobbywing Platinum Pro uh, 40 amp speed controller. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think that these are available anywhere anymore. Um, uh, Banggood hasn't had them in almost a year, and I used to be able to get them from a vendor on eBay, but uh, I don't think they're being produced anymore. But this is a super good uh, 
uh, speed controller. For servos, I'll be using um, 5 gram, these are RC timer uh, servos. I'll be using uh, 5 gram servos for my ailerons and my rudders. I'll be building the plane with, uh, with full controls and uh, 9 gram um, RC timer uh, servos for my elevons. I just like to have that, uh, that extra bit of insurance there. Uh, yeah, so there we go. So this is just kind of the uh, the intro, um, you know, uh, and then I'll get I'll get slowly uh, plugging away and cover uh, uh, some other things as we as we get going. Uh, one one thing I want to show you as well is it's it's important um, if you're going to take you know like especially this airplane. I I like to have I mean you could cut this in half down the center and then orient it, but I, I like to have my wing. Um, sort of all in one piece but because of the way this wing plate is shaped you can see that part of my uh, uh, leading edge root extension won't stay on there so probably what I'll do is I'll eventually draw a line sort of behind uh, these tabs here and I'll trim that off and then you know use the same piece of foam and then and then we'll put those back on later and I'll show you the technique uh, that I use for that uh, so I've already made some modifications as well to, you can see in the highlighted here, um, uh, you know, to move the motor forward to other things because as soon as you do that, it affects a lot of different parts. Uh, same thing here on the bottom, I've moved my, my aileron and uh, elevon servos have been moved forward. I've also had to uh, adjust the back end of the nacelles there so that the prop doesn't uh, strike those um, and the hatch of course also needs to be uh, shortened to accommodate the new motor location. Uh, I've also, uh, I'll have a link down below, I've also done a video on uh, things that you do need to consider if you are going to downsize uh, a park jet, um, you know, with respect to, um, you know, how you're going to fit it all together and that, and that sort of stuff. So I'll, I'll uh, link that down below. Uh, so there we go. So there's kind of the uh, the, the the basic intro uh, to this series. Uh, I think I'm just going to call the series uh, uh, modified uh, Nancy Mig 35B uh, build series. Uh, but it, it, like I said, it will uh, I, I will demonstrate as much as I possibly can a lot of the techniques that I use to build uh, you know relatively high performance yet uh, durable uh, park jets and uh, and we'll go uh, from there. So probably the next step up is, uh, you know, I'll show you how I get things all laid out on the foam and other considerations uh, before I start uh, cutting the foam. So anyway, uh, I'm excited to get into this now. Like I said, I'm, I'm getting my mojo back, I think, and uh, we're getting ready to go. Uh, I should say uh, I did, I did uh, order uh, a few more props uh, from Banggood. <laughs> just to make sure I have a good supply through the uh, upcoming spring and summer flying season and uh, I couldn't help myself I actually found a uh, uh, I think it's called Korea Ria uh, is the brand name um, I'll have a link to the motor down below anyway it's a 2306 2850 uh, KV <laughs> so uh, anyway I can't help myself uh, you know uh, uh, more never can never have enough power. So uh, anyway, so if that shows up in time, uh, maybe that'll be the motor that we put in this plane. I'm not sure. So uh, there we go, folks. Uh, thank thank you for your patience. I know I've been kind of persona non grata here for a while, and uh, and I I appreciate those folks that have reached out to me um, uh, either through my videos or uh, through my uh, my uh, email address uh, scott.parkjet at gmail.com that's associated with this channel. Uh, you know, things are going fine. I just had some other things going on and, uh, you know, hadn't, was my mojo really wasn't at its, where it needed to be. So, uh, thanks, thanks very much for watching. Uh, thanks again for your kind support to my channel. Blue skies, calm winds to everyone. Park jet noise. We have the sound of freedom, baby. Take care.